Okay, continuing on, we will head to the third god, that is Belenos. We'll take a shortcut through the cliff up to the top. This is, uh, in my opinion, one of the easier bosses because uh, while direct combat with him is tough, you can kite him around the arena and then he does an attack that ends up stunning him. So you just avoid him until he does that attack, avoid that attack, and then he can get some free hits in. And uh, remember, we have the tier 5 spear, so that's the character we'll be using. So we'll take him in here. Uh, this, uh, this god has um, an attack, and I'm forgetting what it's called, but basically he sends out a burst of light around the arena, and you want to hide in the shadows. Uh, and there's an achievement for not getting hit with that attack, so you need to basically run to the shade area when he does the attack so that you don't take any damage from it. And then that's the attack that after he does that, he ends up stunned for about five seconds. Then he can run in and smash away while he's uh, incapacitated. So I'm basically just going to beeline it through this uh, dungeon, although there is a gimmick in this dungeon that we'll take advantage of. I don't necessarily need it, but I'm going to kind of point it out so that if it's something that you end up needing to take advantage of, you can. And that's this white circle on the ground right here. There's four or five of these throughout the dungeon. You want to kill an enemy right in the middle of this circle, then you'll see the circle kind of turn red and absorb the enemy. And that's going to put that enemy in a place where uh, we could attack him in the middle of the boss battle to build up bloodlust and heal. Bone rune in the item bag. Again, since I was able to get the ingot and get the tier 5 weapon to kill Morgan for the achievement, I'm not necessarily avoiding items anymore because it's not a no items run at this point. So I'll pick up items and see if any of them help me, in addition to possibly bringing some of the uh, end of dungeon item rewards with me into uh, subsequent dungeons. So again, I'm just kind of quickly uh, moving through here. I'm definitely not going to make it a priority to kill everything. Weakening the boss by killing his minions is not really a priority at this point. Uh, and I don't plan on taking any damage during this boss. There's an achievement for killing a god without taking any damage. And we're going to get that done here. So uh, I don't really need to worry about killing guys in these circles to, to create the uh, sacrificial enemies that you could attack to build up bloodlust and regain health. But I'm kind of doing it anyway. I'm going to take a slight detour here. This is uh, scenically very cool in my opinion. You can kind of overlook where we're going to head and if off in the distance up at the top you see those four stones in the middle of an open area, that's where we're going to end up fighting the boss. Those four stones end up with the sacrificed guys from the white circles tied to them and while we're running around the arena, you know, avoiding the boss essentially, you could attack those enemies to try to uh, to try to heal. So what I'm going to do is weaken this guy and then I'm going to hit this cart. There's an achievement for killing an enemy with an environmental hazard. Of course it looks like the cart just knocked him to the side and didn't kill him so we won't get that achievement here but there's a uh, surefire way to get that in a later dungeon. No enemies around here so I can't create a sacrificed enemy, no big deal. Again, I don't plan on using it, but I'm just sort of pointing it out for you in case it's something that's helpful in this in this boss battle. There's another circle here where we'll we'll get an, a, a sacrificial enemy. Just kind of kite him back to the the circle and kill him. So from here, I'm pretty much just going to beeline it to the boss. I'm not going to waste any time killing many of these enemies. Maybe kill a couple that get in my direct path along the way. And here we are. This is that area like I had shown you from the um, the over overhanging cliff looking down on this lower area. We'll get the boss cinematic. He's basically a giant moth. And you could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. And if you could figure out the patterns of his, his melee attacks, you could avoid or 
parry them, but like I said, all I'm going to do, I'm going to toss this spear at him right from the start to try to chip in some damage. And then I'm just going to kite him around in circles and uh, wait for him to do the, the explosive light attack. Usually he does about, I don't know, six or eight melee attacks um, before he does the, the explosive light attack. He's also going to fly up in the air. There he is. Now his, uh, his attacks are a little more dangerous, and his attacks hit hard. If he hits you, he's going to do two, three, maybe four pips of damage. So, again, I'm just running from him, kiting him around the arena, and waiting for that one attack. Now, here it is. What you want to do, you see, this creates shadow from the pillars. You want to get behind the pillar in the shadow so you take no damage. And then he's stunned, and I totally whiffed on all of the attacks. That was embarrassing. But whatever. We'll just keep going. So what I'm going to do, again, to take no damage is just kite him, stay uh, far enough away that he can't hit me with any of his, his attacks, wait for that um, explosive light attack, hide in the shadow so I don't take damage, and then rush in and, uh, and attack him until he's dead. It's probably going to take two cycles further, so it's just um, take your time. There it is. Get in the shadow. I don't really like this angle, but it worked out. And I'm going to hit him like three or four times and then get away. No reason to overextend. He's definitely low enough on health now that I'll be able to kill him in the next cycle. Especially if I can poke him with this throwing weapon. That did, wow, far more damage than I was expecting. Alright, here it comes. Oh, I'm going to run far away. Oh no, it might take me too long. Well, uh, lucky there I wasn't in the shadow, but I guess I was far enough away that I didn't take any damage. So I'll run in and finish him off, and a few achievements will pop. We'll get the achievement for defeating him. We'll get the achievement for taking no damage and defeating a god. And we'll get the achievement for defeating him without, um, without being hit by his radiant sunlight attack, as the game calls it. So now that's it. Third god down. We'll obviously emerge from the dungeon and get our rewards. See if there's any RNG events or anything. Walk east to Bosch. So terrible luck. This is the random occurrence that your character is basically crippled. His health is destroyed, his strength is destroyed, and his speed is destroyed. So he'll recover from that eventually, I think after five or six battles. But in the meantime, this character is now worthless. We got another ingot, which was unnecessary but lucky. But you know what? I'll show you how the well works with that. And they're good. We got a tier three spear, which is great because the guy with the tier five weapon that we were going to lean on for the full run is now uh, basically worthless. So now we'll use the... Give the tier 3 spear to a character, and that's who we're going to end up using to push forward. Let's take a quick look at the map. And you see it's not too far from here to get to the next god. And that is Ogmios, and that's where we'll start the next video.